Hello, everyone. I'm your host today, Fabiola Lera, and welcome back to another Adobe Live social media video challenge. I'm so excited today. I'm going to be sharing with you how you can use the Premiere Pro new text-based editing tool to create social clips from your podcast. So you can use the text-based editing tool to edit your entire podcast, and I'm going to show you how you can do it. But I also want to show you how you can use this to create all those little clips that you can share on social media so people find your podcast. All right, so let's get into the workflow today. So I've got Conveniently, I have a podcast. It's titled Draws in Spanish. And on Draws in Spanish, I interview artists um, from Latin American backgrounds about their creative career. And so I have a podcast episode here this, that's already live with this artist called Simone Salib. And here's what an episode is. It's about 57 minutes long. And so that's not going to fit into a fun little reel or a fun little TikTok it's just, it doesn't work. So here's what you're going to do with your uh, podcast project pulled up. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to zoom in real quick. Here you can see I have a bunch of different tracks. I have got the track. This is a dual view track, but I have a track here with my guest. That's the view you're, you're seeing. And then I have myself in a different track. It's disabled, so you're not going to see it. Right? Treatment on us, so it's just a bit brighter. All right, so for today, I'm going to show you how you can take this and create a fun little social clip that you can actually use and share on social media. All right, so whoops, my mouse is doing all sorts of things. Okay, Um. There we go. So I already know the clip that I want to use. And that's because I've, if you have a podcast, you've listened to it probably five times over during the edit, right? Well, you don't have to listen to it another time. If you want to figure out that, go straight to that part that you want to use for social media, text-based editing is a huge friend here. So here over on Workspaces, go over to text-based editing. Oops. All right, go over to text-based editing, and now you have this transcript of the entire um, of the entire podcast, and you can actually change here the speakers as well. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave it as is. I don't want to mess with it. Um, this specific project was created pre text-based editing, but I can you open it now and use text-based editing, and it's so much faster. So let me show you here. I know the clip. There's this question where I ask her. Do you remember a time? And there it is. Look, Premiere already found it and identified it for me, which is perfect. Then all I have to do is it's horizontal now, right? What we actually want is we actually want a uh, vertical and we want it to be catchy. And I know that uh, Reverb Mike here is saying, just grab your favorite clips and put them together. But it's so much more than that because guests are long-winded sometimes. Sometimes they have a good answer, but we need to trim it down to a really snappy 30 seconds and text-based editing is gonna help you out here. So once you identify the clip, which I have set markers here, but it's gonna be from here. I'm gonna cut the, um, I'm gonna cut it right there to here. That's the section that I want, basically from here to here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this sequence. So I have all my timelines here. I'm going to duplicate it. And from there, I'm going to, on this duplicated one, which I'm going to call short sample, I want to basically uh, remove everything else. So if there's parts of this video that you have that uh, aren't the part that you want to try and edit for social, you just delete everything else. So I'm just going to mass delete here. And um, there we go. Delete, delete. Just grab everything that I don't need. Just delete it. So you want to isolate the clip. And now you know that it's that part because you scrub through the uh, script over here. And I know that that's the part that I want. I don't have to listen to it a million times, which can get tiring. And I'm going to ripple delete. And now I just have this section isolated. So let's double check here. Do you remember a time where you were discouraged from being an artist or anything like that? Or was it like a vague undertone or look of discouragement? 
I don't remember the exact moment, but all right. So I know that's the clip. I'm not going to make us play, play it all the way through because a minute and 30 seconds feels like a long time. Okay. So once you have this set, we now have this isolated clip, right? I want to go ahead and turn it into, turn it vertical. But the problem here is I have this vertical view. You know what? Let me just show you exactly what happens when you have a vertical view like that, because you, you probably have that if you have a podcast. So once we're here, you're going to go over to reframe sequence. So in order to do that, I usually just type in reframe, auto reframe sequence right there. It's under the sequences and it's going to give you some options. So here's the sequence name. That's the one that that's a new um, name that it's going to create. And it's going to usually put that in the um in parentheses, and then we have our target aspect ratio, which is going to be the vertical nine by 16. That's what you can use for Instagram reels, TikTok, YouTube shorts, that kind of stuff. And then you want motion tracking. I'm going to leave it by default and I'm going to say, don't nest the clips. Uh, I'm just going to have it do this and check it out. You press create. Boom. You have a new sequence and it's nine by 16. It was that fast. So let's play this through. Do you remember a time where you were discouraged from being an artist or anything like that? Or was it like a vague undertone or look of discouragement? I don't remember the exact moment, but I do remember that. Like, so when I first, like, when I first, I, even when I first moved to Philly, I wasn't really making art like that. It wasn't until like 2017 that I decided to like throw myself into it like fully. Um, and I like this whole series. I'm going to do it a little faster there. So you can see here that this dual view auto reframe didn't really know what to do with that. And that makes total sense. So here's what I'm going to do. And what I suggest you do, if you have this, um, you want to just delete basically that dual view. So I'm going to just delete it. You could have deleted that track. We could do both. Okay. And then I'm going to enable, I'm going to hit option to select the clips and enable the solo videos. Cause I still have those. I try not to, um, ruin that for this exact purpose. And now I have, I have it there. And then here I need, a, I need both of them on again. So I'm just going to enable those. There we go. And so now I have both, but you know, the one on top is hiding the one underneath. Well, no problem. This is super easy to fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to effect controls. Going to go over to effects, not effects controls and type in crop and you're going to get the crop transform tool. You want to drag that over to both clips. So I'm dragging that to both. Now, when you play this through, I'm going to mute the audio real quick. Um, when you play this through, when you mute the audio, the transcript goes away. So keep that in mind, but I'll, I just don't want to have it for the stream here. You can see that the camera is shifting. Um, you can see it in the background. So auto reframe is tracking her face and that's what it's following. And that makes total sense. But sometimes with the cutting and with the fact that we know the computer, like because we're podcasting remotely is stationary, maybe you don't want that. I would say for um, effect controls, when you get into cropping, it's kind of tricky to have auto reframe there. So I just kind of turn it off for the ones that I start editing but it's up to you. Okay. So with auto reframe off. Oh, that also did the position and scale. So let's leave it on and see how we do it. I feel like sometimes I leave it on. Sometimes I take it off. Really. It's like an order of operations type of thing. So with here, I want to change the scale down. I'm changing the scale on the reframe because we've left that on and I'm going to adjust the position on the reframe offset. And I'm just going to put her on the lower half. And then I'm going to put myself reacting to what, what she's saying on the upper half using just the offset. So I guess you don't need the crop, but you do sometimes. So let's, let's move this up. So now I'm going to turn my guides on. I have the center guide here that I just dragged down. So I can um, just quickly change how far up everyone is. So I'm just going to move this down. And there we go. Now it's centered. I'm going to switch over to the vertical space so you can see it over here. So now we're centered and we're both, uh, I don't actually say anything. I'm just breaking it up here because I didn't want to have the shot, her camera on the entire time. It kind of gets a little bit boring for the viewer. So I'm going to play it through 
and I'm going to speed it up so you can see. There we go. But the audio stays the same. But here here you get what I'm saying about the audio tracking. It was a bit odd to have it there because we're just like moving left and right. So I would turn that off, but I'll leave that up to you on your end. You can um, auto reframe without the tracking. So it's not a really it's not really a big deal. It's just, you know, up to you what you decide. So let's do it one more time over here. I'm going to do it without the auto reframe. So I'm going to move over. OK, I'll just I'll stay in this. Um, I'll stay in this workspace. So we have effects and then effect controls. I'm going to delete the auto reframe. So you just delete it. Just be bold. Delete it. And you can just resize it here on the motion. So I'm going to go back to 50. I'm going to set this to 50. Okay. And with those guides, I know I can position that down and position myself up. And if it's not filling the screen, we can edit it. And so here I feel like uh, their camera is a little, it's like I would want to scale it up. So let's scale it up. Oop, that's me. This is the tricky part when you're editing both. Okay, I'm going to scale that up. And then here's where the crop transform. I'm going to drag that onto them. So I get the crop options down here. And I'm just going to crop the top a little bit so that it's centered kind of about there. Okay, so, and then you can just copy and paste that. So I think I prefer this. So on the previous edit, I'm just gonna delete the auto reframe, delete the auto reframe, and now we messed everything up, but don't worry, just press copy, paste attributes, right click paste attributes, copy, right click paste attributes, there you go. So now I've shown you both ways of how to do it. The cameras kind of stay still there. And, you know, here you have to adjust it because I think they're closer to the camera. So this is what you just can can play with and see um, exactly how you want to do it. And it's amazing. So I really, really recommend it. And then um, now that we have this set up, you have auto reframe. You've got the dual camera view. It's great. But then another thing we can do now, if I unmute everything, I'm going to go over to workspaces and go into text based editing. So I'm going to take this, just edit, edit it. So it's a little bit tighter. Now, just a little reminder, my name is Fabiola Lara, and I'm sharing how to edit a podcast clip for social media using text based editing tool in Premiere Pro. Let's see the chat is all over. All right. Hello, Umacorn. Hello, Reverb Mike. Hello, um, General Kenobi. Hello, Sean. Thanks so much for being here. If you have any questions, just drop it in. Um, can you cut and move text based on the text? We'll text go along with the video. Let's try it. So if I grab this, I can, I think, move my playhead where I want it and hit insert. Did it work? Not quite. It might be a thing with the text-based editing. Let's see. Okay, you should do it free, but for yourself, I can delete it. Yes, but I can't seem to. I think you can copy it, paste it. It moves essentially, yeah, just that part, but it won't copy like the stuff above it. But what you could do is now that you have it selected is you could go in yourself and just copy that whole part. So yes, but you might want a little bit more and then you have to kind of do it yourself, but at least you don't have to um, kind of do it manually every single time. So that's kind of helpful. All right. Now, um, here we go. Let's look at the text over here. We're in the text editing workspace. I said, do you remember a time when you were discouraged from being an artist or anything like that? Or was it like a vague undertone or look of discouragement? It's a bit wordy, right? I was talking to this person, keeping it conversational, and it gets a little wordy. So let's let's play it. Do you remember a time where you were discouraged from being an artist or anything like that? I feel like I don't need the part where I said anything like that. So I'm just going to click here, go back. All right. And you can see here, I'm going to zoom in, that text-based editing is highlighting this part of the sequence. And I'm going to hit delete. And now... Let's play it through. It shouldn't have that part. Do you part. remember a time where you were discouraged from being an artist? Was it like a vague under? All right. So it did. It worked. It edited out. I accidentally took the or out and I think I want to keep the or in. So I'm going to hit delete. And then let's play this through. Being an artist 
or was it like a vague? So that worked out great. And then there's this little 0.3 second pause. And if you're not seeing the pauses, you might not have them displayed, but you want to have them displayed because you can edit them out. So now I'm going to select it, delete. And now I shouldn't even have that pause. Do you remember a time where you were discouraged from being an artist or was it like a vague undertone? That's so like smooth. That was so, so great. Okay. And then I can read through this script and decide what parts maybe don't need to be in here. So um, I think this part, let me play it through. And at this point, like a lot of the friends I had in the city were also some people I went to college with at Rowan in New Jersey and like had moved to the city at this point. And so I feel like I don't need this part and like had moved to the city at this point. I don't think I need that. So I'm going to hit delete. Um, we want to keep it a little bit more concise and um, let's delete some of these ands and likes. So easy to delete right there. So let's play that through. I went to college with at Rowan in New Jersey. A lot of them are graphic designers. A lot of them are like doing different kind of work within the art field. So, you know, this is up to you now. Editorially, you need to decide what parts you want to remove. So I think that that makes sense. I went to college with at Rowan in New Jersey. And see here, um, the AI wrote rowing in New Jersey. That's not exactly what she's talking about. So I'm just double clicking and now I can just make any of those corrections. I think that's how it's spelled. Rowan in New Jersey. A lot of them are graphic designers. A lot of them are like doing. So that sounded good. There's a bit of like a, it wasn't so smooth here on this transition. So I want to share with you how I would go about fixing that. Jersey, a lot of them. You, you can kind of hear this pop. So what you can do is zoom in and you can, you have two options. You can cut it so that you don't get that pop. A lot of but it's mostly because of the ending, the transition between Rowan and New Jersey, there's a harsh cut. So I would just right click on that audio bit and, and hit, let me re-explain. I would hover over the end of that audio clip so you get this little arrow and then you right click apply default transition and it applies it to both um, both what it's the video clip is linked to and the audio. I'm going to delete the, the video transition because I don't really need that. But then I'm going to just hover over the audio transition and pull it in. And that's going to kind of smooth out the transition between those two audio clips. New Jersey, a lot of them are. That sounds so normal. Look. College with at Rowan in New Jersey. A lot of them are graphic designers. Boom. No problem. Designers. A lot of them are like doing different kind of work within the art field. And I was like, I'm going to start doing street art. And they were like, why? So I can delete that pause if we wanted to. And AI and the text based editing just starts deleting it. So, this is how I would go about just cutting this up. Now, I've already done it here and I've got it down to a minute and 12 seconds. Do, do, do. Let me make sure I'm on the right one. Okay, let's go over to my project. Yes, this one right here. I have it down to a second 25. I think I even edited some more out on our version. Okay. So once you're done kind of going through all of these, it's time to start editing um, the actual adding, adding more graphics and everything. So here's the one that I'm going to, I'm going to take it from. So let's say this is your final edit. You've gone through the text based editor and you're like, this is good. I think I have it down to a minute 23. I would say this could be the version for TikTok. Or yeah, this could be the version for TikTok, the minute 23. I feel like people are more willing to stick around and have a little bit more context. And then you could even duplicate this sequence and edit it tighter and have a version for YouTube shorts or for Instagram reels where I think the time is a little bit more cutthroat. So that's up to you. Um, from here, let's say we're going to go with this one, which is a minute 24. And I've already gone through this transcript. And I'm like, this is awesome. Now it's time to actually generate some of the captions. So all you have to do here, once you have, you've gone through your text-based editing, you've made any corrections, you corrections to the spelling, you can, you can hit create captions. And we want to do that and caption pref, open up caption preferences. So if you downloaded the project files, which I encourage you to download, you can go over and hit, uh, get the Lime Helvetica preset that I've created for you. So that'll show up under style. So I'm going to hit Lime Helvetica, which is the preset that I made. And I'm going to minimize the duration in seconds. And I'm also going to minimize the length in characters because I don't want to have a ton of text 
long blocks of text. I'd rather have shorter blocks that are faster. And that's just for, you know, people's attention spans. So I'm going to hit create captions. And it's going to create the captions for me. There seems to be a gap here, which is bizarre. So I'm just going to hit, um, I'm going to go back to the transcript and hit generate static transcript, which isn't the one that we want, but I'm going to let it do it. And then I'm going to go back and repeat the auto transcript. So that can happen sometimes. I think this is um, just the file was really big, but I'm going to hit retranscribe, generate text space editing transcript. That's the one that you want. Okay. And I'm going to delete, redo the captions from here. Okay. Let's do it again. We wanted that. We want the Lime Helvetica. I'm going to go down to 20. I'm going to go down to 2.4, create captions. Oh, we still have a gap there. That's weird, but don't worry because I think I have another version where it doesn't have the gap. So, okay, here we go. It created them perfectly and it will likely work great on your end. Um, once you have created those captions, um, I actually, I know what happened there. I think there's an audio that's not enabled. Okay. Once you have those uh, captions created, you can now customize them. So this is with the Lime Helvetica one, but if you hover here, wherever you put your playhead, you can then select that and edit it. So here I have, do you remember a time where you were discouraged from being an artist? Now I like this, but I feel like it's a bit too, too much text. So I'm gonna hit this split caption and now I can split it to, do you remember a time? And then here, where you were discouraged. And now I'm going to zoom into my timeline and make sure that it's timed correctly. Do you remember a time where you were discouraged? From that works great. Maybe I would, I would. Do you remember a time, time where you were? That worked great. So that's exactly in the middle. And then you can go through this and just make any correction. So I don't like how that's stacked. Okay. So I'm just going to make those adjustments. I feel like this one can you just want to correct any of that type that maybe you don't want it laid in that specific way. Like, I don't want this word to be there all on its own. So I'm going to go and edit it. So that's kind of what I do to fine tune it. And I have the Lime Helvetica that you can find in the project file. It's set so that it's not all the way at the bottom or all the way at the top. It's kind of like, I didn't want it in the middle because that's where I have the um, the people talking, us talking. But if you have it here, it'll still show up on the preview on, let's say, Instagram Reels, but it'll still be super legible and it won't like be hard to understand where you're reading. Okay, so I'm going to actually go over to the vertical workspace and get out of the text space workspace just to show you some other things that you can do. Um, here is the completed one. So I'm going to play it through one more time very quickly. I'm going to play it from, let's say, right here where we created that dual view. Some are like doing different kind of work within the art field. And I was like, I'm going to start doing street art. And they were like, why? And I was like, I'm going to learn how to we paste. I'm going to do it. And they were like, and no one's going to pay you. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm just going to do because I want to try. And they were like, I don't know. I feel like some people would allude to this idea that like, oh, like if you're not like being paid to do it, why would you waste your time doing it? I'm like, because I want to do it. It's not the spirit of creativity. No, it's not. You shouldn't do it for free for other people, but for free for yourself, 100%. Exactly. So I just kind of like decided to. So that's how you can create these really awesome clips using text-based editing to cut down the time and even cut down those clips even further. Because even once you create the captions, if you go back over to text-based editing, you can still go to that transcript and, and select an entire part and just delete it. Doop, doop, doop. Ah, it's not working for me today, but you can do it. I did it yesterday. You can just select a part and delete it. And it's, it's like re-editable. So it's never like locked into place. But let's see, let's delete the captions now. And then you can just delete a whole section. So there you go. It worked and you would just regenerate those captions. Okay, everyone, remember this stream. It's not the end of this stream right here. Head over to our Discord. On our Discord, you can share your work and we can give you some feedback. There's a ton of mentors up 
there's a ton of mentors on there that'll help you level up your skills and just other creatives to inspire you so that you can create the content that you've always wanted to make. The Discord link is in the description. So go ahead and check that out. Remember to download the project files. And in the description, you'll also find other free resources and challenges and links to get you plugged into all our creative cloud communities. Thank you so much. I'll see you over in the Discord. And once again, thanks for creating here with me today. I can't wait to see your videos. Please, if you have a podcast and you use this method, which I have used for this podcast personally, head over to um, at Fabiolita Draws to find me and share those videos with me. I'd love to see your work. I'm also on the Discord and tune in next week for some more uh, video challenge content. Thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you learned so much on the stream. Bye-bye. <laughs>